Hello and welcome. This is TV Papua News of January 2013. My name is Serko Mamoribo. Today on TV Papua News, growing international support for free West Papua campaigns, the rising of the people power in West Papua, and Indonesian terrorism at the start of 2013. In the view of the continuing terrorism in West Papua by the Indonesian military during the past 50 years, we must wonder why most people in the Western world are oblivious to the indigenous Melanesians' plight, and what factors are contributing to the continuation of such abuse. The exploitation of natural resources by extractive industries result in catastrophic harms to human and environmental health. Mainstream global media fail to report on such military and corporate injustices and therefore independent solidarity groups are growing in numbers internationally. For example, the Free West Papua political prisoners team in Washington DC, which is a group of academics and human rights activists who work together with Herman Wangai, who is a Papuan refugee living in Washington DC. Human Rights Watch reports that Indonesia has imprisoned nearly a hundred activists from Maluku and Papua for peacefully voicing their patriotism and political views. And in Los Angeles, California, Harold Green persistently creates awareness on the West Papuan freedom struggle and the role of the US government in the Indonesian government's suppression. What, what I'm painfully made aware of, said Harold, is that since Barack Obama has been president, things seemingly have gotten worse for our brothers and sisters in West Papua. Genocide. Uh, but we're specifically here to appeal to President Obama to reconsider the, the decision he made in November 2010 when he visited Indonesia and fully normalized uh, military relationships with the Indonesian government and is the military, the Indonesian military, as Liz has mentioned, that has been responsible for the genocide, for the brutalization, uh, for the rapes and the extrajudicial killings of people, not just in West Papua, but in the Malukas. As his, as his administration continues to arm and train the Indonesian military forces, which is now included with the promise to sell the Indonesian Apache, so Indonesia, I'm sorry, to sell Indonesia the Apache helicopters, which we know will be used in West Papua. On Solomon Islands, uh, Chairman of Solomon Islands for West Papua, Rexy Roses, held a speech uh, which highlighted that it's now time for dialogue and negotiations to end the violence in West Papua and to allow a peaceful referendum. This year will be a challenging one and we will ensure that the cries of indigenous Melanesian people of West Papua will be heard in every corner of the Pacific and beyond. Rexy said, it's not difficult to imagine the impact of, ten of tens of thousands of Indonesian troops uh, on the daily lives of West Papuan people. This new action by the Indonesian military raises the question, why would Indonesia send so many troops to West Papua? Officials from the West Papua National Coalition for Liberations have now submitted an application for the Melanesian Spearhead Group for a membership on the 13th of January. The officials had a one-hour meeting with the delegations of the Melanesian Spearhead Group and there they were accompanied by former Prime Minister and Advocate for West Papuan Independence, Barack Sope, and a representative of the FLNKS of Kanaki, New Caledonia. The Vice Chairman of West Papua National Coalition for, Liber for Liberation, Dr. John Ondawame, thanked the Director General and staff for making this submission possible. He stated that this is an historical occasion that also marks the beginning of the efforts this year to advance our, our cause. They hope this will encourage Indonesia to take the necessary steps to resolve this issue. And in the Netherlands, a working group, Papua Solidarity Days, held a meeting in Amersfoort about the process of democracy in Indonesia and the position of the Papuans in this process. 
There is a variety of political parties now. There are free elections now and there is critical media. But not all benefit from this positive development because the Indonesian government disregards the rights of indigenous people. And they are distressing the situation with regards to land rights. The Indonesian state sees itself as the owner of the land unless there are written papers of ownership. The Solidarity Day was ended with singing the Papua national anthem, Haitanaku Papua. In London, Benny Wenda announced his first official Overseas Freedom Tour, which is, our, which is taking place in February and March. Now having successfully fought an Interpol red notice, red notice against him, he is free to travel again, free to take the message of the people of West Papua around the world. He will visit political leaders, lawyers, activists, supporters in the US, Australia, New Zealand, Vanuatu, the Solomon Islands and Papua New Guinea. To build support and awareness of the campaign for self-determination for the people of West Papua. The rise of people power in West Papua. As international awareness and support grows, Papuans stand up and show their expression of self-determination. With peaceful actions, they recognize that the, that the power of the people can now be stronger than the people in the power, which is a trend seen across the world with movements like the Spanish Indignados or the Arab Spring, Occupy movements, and most recently, the the worldwide indigenous movement, I don't know more. Well over a thousand people engaged in a colorful and vibrant demonstration calling for West Papua independence in Manukwari, which was held on January 17th, despite the Indonesian, Indonesian police banning this march, which was organized by activists from the former Federation, Federated Republic of West Papua. The Manukari protest saw several groups of singers, dancers and drummers converge at the Sangeng Sports Stadium after, after, after when they started marching for a few hours. They were shadowed at all times by excessive police and military forces, accordingly to secure the demonstration. The demonstrators felt that there was a scenario being created to disrupt the peaceful demonstration and to provoke violence. But however, their own field coordinators were able to ensure mass discipline. And the rally dispersed peacefully in the afternoon. But a day before, police arrested, already arrested seven Papuans in Montembu, Japan. The arrest came the day before the large demonstrations in Manukwari. And the raid on the heavily targeted village of Montembu was carried out in the early morning. And there they arrested seven people for allegedly supporting Papuan independence. The following people were arrested. Johan Ayum, Lam Kiyur Ayum, Penina Pangurai, Oki Varkavani, Mambiva Mandavami, Simeon Ayum, Isaac Varkavami. No information was received yet if those who were arrested were subjected to, to mistreatment during their arrest. But however, Mantembu has been long targeted with extreme brutality by the same local uh, Indonesian security forces. Later in January, also the West Papua Melanesian Solidarity Woman, under the state of Dubai, held a march in Monokrari in the celebration of the gospel entering Papua 158 years ago, which was on the island of Mansinam. Indonesian terrorism at the start of 2013 nationally and internationally more and more calls for anti-terrorism law in West Papua by the Indonesian government are being made. While most Papuans consider the Indonesian military, police, security and special forces as the terrorists. All the ingredients seem to create a confusing image war in which is a clear situation of colonial occupation and suppression of the people of West Papua. The KMPB urges regional police chief to wipe clean the wanted persons list on a press conference in Jayapura, January 6th. 
A spokesperson for the West Papua National Committee has claimed that the detention of a number of the KNPB activists and the addition of more KNPB members' names to the wanted persons list has been done purely in the interest of the Papuan political elite. The spokesperson Wit Lama said, it's in the elite's interest that the people of Papua are being, make, are being victimized. Many members of the society and of KNPB have had their names added to the wanted persons list. KNPB is urging the regional police chief to free a number of the KNPB activists and remove their names from the wanted persons list. Butchter Tabuni released unexpectedly from Abepura prison after completing his sentence on January 19th. Butchta Tabuni is the chairman of the pro-independence National Parliament of West Papua. He was sentenced to prison after the charge for, alleged, for have, having allegedly inflicted damage on the Abepura prison in December 2011 and for exchanging harsh words with prison warders. We now show you a video of Jennifer Robinson on ABC News about peaceful Papuan activism, which gives you a clearer vision on the freedom activists. Especially now Indonesia images them as terrorists in order to apply anti-terrorism law in West Papua. Jennifer Robinson is an Australian lawyer best known for her role in helping fight efforts by WikiLeaks Julian Assange to avoid extradition from Britain. But for a decade, she's also been deeply involved in providing legal assistance and advice to West Papuan activists seeking autonomy and in some cases independence from Indonesia. Jennifer Robinson, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me, Jim. Let's start with this. An influential Indonesian legislator has rebuked Australian Foreign Minister Bob Carr for seeking an inquiry into the killing of Marco Tabuni. They're branding him a terrorist, at least the Indonesian legislators are, and accusing Australia of double standards, raising questions about this episode, but then being more than happy when Detachment 88 tracked down and killed jihadists and bomb makers in Indonesia. What do you think about that? There's absolutely no hypocrisy involved whatsoever. And in fact, this is actually very revealing about in the Indonesian government's perception of peaceful West Papuan activists who are speaking out on behalf of their people for self-determination. The Australian government is right to institute an investigation into this when you have forces designed to be countering terrorism being turned against domestic dissidents and peaceful activists. In no way can you can compare Mako Tabuni to jihadists. He was a peaceful activist, he was a leader of his people, and all he was doing was criticising the government for their human rights abuse, seeking accountability for that abuse, and putting forward the West Papuans' desire for self-determination. This is not a crime, not in any democratic state, and it's certainly not terrorism. And for the viewers who are interested to get a deeper view on the history and current situation of the freedom struggle of West Papua, we recommend to watch the new doc Al Jazeera documentary, People and Power, Goodbye Indo. You can find and watch this documentary on the website of Al Jazeera, which we will show below. If you have any news, images or videos about the struggle of West Papua, please send this to info at, Papua, info at papuatv.nl. This was TV Papua News of January 2013. We thank you for watching and we, and we hope you join us again next time.